Is it Trump North? It sure has some remarkable similarities. A populist base harboring grievances, electing a clearly unqualified candidate. Now, Doug Ford rode a wave of voter discontent and anti-liberal elitism to a majority government. Now, what's next? There seems to be little in the way of clear public policy promised, except perhaps a buck of beer. Now, like Trump, Ford could prove to be a great disruptor. Clearly, the man has no idea what he's doing. But the anti-urbanites want to change, and change is what they will get. And is Quebec next? The times, are they a-changing? Well, the erstwhile leader of the bloc put it best. The movement is kind of sick. Well, there you go. Bob's your uncle and Martine Ouellette, after unleashing about an hour's worth of venom, has left the building. The bloc has now become the laughing stock of Quebec politics. Well, here's a story that largely slipped under the radar this week, but it's an important one. Moreover, it's instructive. The report looks at income disparities in Quebec between women and men. The wage gap in Quebec still is substantial. In the health sector, women make a median wage of 34800 Men earn 41000 It's a sector where 84% of the jobs are held by women. In law, women make a median wage of 84300 while men earn 101600 And over half, 51.7% of people working as judges, lawyers, and notaries are women. And not surprisingly, in Quebec, women overall make a median wage of 42400 while men earn 51600 And in none of the 67 categories looked at, in not one of the 67, did women make more than men. There's still a very steep hill to climb, even in progressive Quebec. Well, play ball, not so fast. Apparently, a game of softball is too dangerous for the beanheads in Projet Montréal. The borough is closing one of two ball diamonds at Jamars Park because, well, it just might cause a loss of life or limb. Well, franchement, the borough even commissioned a ballistics report as if Scud missiles were being launched from home plate. We know that Projet Montréal is firmly rooted in the nanny state and telling us what's good for us, including closing the road over the mountain. But is it also on a mission to take fun out of summer? Don't buy me peanut or Cracker Jack. And by the way, the head of the Plateau Politburo, Luc Wrongway on a Bixie Ferrandez, when asked about the Jeanne Mons ballpark on 98.5 this week, said, they are a community of Anglos of a certain age. They've been there forever. They make hot dogs. Well, there you go. Aging Anglos just don't matter to the hipster mayor. And why do these people so often have to frame everything in terms of language? It's just a game of ball. So what's next for the race-baiting king of narcissism who sits in the White House? Yes, it is a fact that troops did burn down the White House in 1814 when Britain was at war with the U.S. Now, Trump complained about it when speaking with our right honorable this week. And the White House burned, 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 and we're the ones that did it. It burned, 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 while the president ran and cried. It burned, 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 and things were very historical. And the Americans ran and cried like a bunch of little babies. Wah, 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 in the War of 1812. Of course, it wasn't Canadian troops. Canada wasn't founded until 50 years later. Now, not sure Trump is well-versed in the finer points of history. This guy can say anything, and a third of Americans believe him. Truth doesn't matter in this White House, and it's dangerous. A lie makes its way halfway around the world before truth gets to put its pants on. Now, Churchill said that, and he was right. I'm Barry Wilson. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our weekly poll on Facebook. We want to know what you think.